Hey guys, it's Dr. Crashow here. It is Wednesday for sure. I think it's November the 6th <laughs> or 7th. My goal is to qualify for the CrossFit Games by the time that I'm 55. I'm gonna be, this month, believe it or not, it's birthday month, I'm gonna be 39 years old this month. It's crazy to think that. But most importantly, uh, I'm interested in leaving a legacy for my two boys, Ari and Vetti, and hopefully for the family that we're growing and that we're creating. I think it's super valuable for them to know me during this time, to have footage of themselves growing up and all the things that I'm involved in because I would have loved to have that with my parents and my grandparents. Hope you're having a great week. Uh, there's a really funny, I asked my dad, so in Wisdom Over a few weeks in that little bit, I asked my dad what book he would recommend. You know, the one thing that he thinks everyone should read, it, I think it's pretty ridiculous. You need to check it out. Uh, training's been great, everything's very consistent. Um, I am back to tracking my food. It's so funny, I play this game with myself where I think that I don't necessarily need to track because I know, I don't know. <laughs> if you're one of those people who is super happy with how their body looks you know, and feels and, and you're able to keep everything in check and you don't have to track your food, more power to you, I for one do. So if you're struggling, please start with tracking, right? I love, uh, I love Drucker's quote, what, uh, what gets measured gets managed or gets improved. So if you're struggling, start with measuring it. Um, the most important thing, and I think the real value of you listening this week is being able to regain your focus. So we had a, an incident in practice where a homeless person came off the street. Uh, they were in a lot of distress. They were very sick. It ended up, they, I mean, they were asking for an ambulance. So of course we called an ambulance. We want to help this person. Uh, and it ended up that they were in the hospital already and then they escaped and somehow ended up in our practice. And as you can imagine, I'm, it was crazy. And, and, and the last thing that you would want is a ambulance wheeling somebody out of your practice, let alone as anybody, especially as a chiropractor. So it was the last straw. Um, traditionally, I've had trouble maintaining my focus. So I asked around and my favorite response and the one that I've been doing with some success came from one of my coaches and mentors, Dr. Ryan. And what he does when things threaten his focus is he, is he really dials down on tangible, um, on using his senses in the tangible world around him. So touch, taste, smell, hearing, and sight. Right, so I mean, we're f I'm fortunate in the sense that I'm a chiropractor. So when things in the practice get very busy and distracting, I have the uh, ability to focus on feeling the person in front of me, the person whose spine I'm trying to correct and fix, I have that available to me. So I've been using my sense of focus to dial back to something tactile. In the gym, it's, you know, smell and vision, smelling the chalk and smelling the sweat and smelling the environment. And just really, the point of the matter is, if you're having trouble focusing and concentrating, the strategy that I have um, had some success with and what I'm recommending you try, and please report back to me because I am really interested in how this is gonna go, is to focus on your surroundings and then really dial it down to the most basic neurological components of your nerve system, which is your sensation and how the inter and how you're interacting with the environment. Like I said, let me know how it goes. Have a great week. I'll talk to you next time. Welcome back. First of all, those are awesome sandals, dad. Amazing. What's wrong with them? They're amazing. They're Euro dad to the max. We have our drinks. Look at and he's on the iPhone. I'm not an iPhone. Yeah, you are. My question today is, what's the best book that you've ever read? And if you had to recommend that somebody read one book, if they could only read one book in their whole life, what would they, what would they read? What? What was your favorite book? Well, there are so many favorite books. I cannot ever single out one. Oh, well, that's why it's a challenging question. Well, if I can recommend one, it was Trilogy, Mos Moscow, Stalingrad, Berlin. It followed the, the, the life of the, I think it was imaginary figure, Colonel Wilshofen, as the Germans uh, invaded Russia and uh, how they eventually uh, had to retreat and uh, all the struggles along the way. It was it was very good book. And uh, Who's the author? Uh, I don't know who the author is. 
But it's a trilogy, three big books. Moscow, Stalingrad, Berlin. And what's one book that everybody should read? One book that everybody should read? <laughs> As the kids are yelling at me. Uh, probably a Canadian constitution. What if, the, what if the people watching this aren't Canadian? And that's not even a book, that's a document. It doesn't matter, it's a book, it's a written document. What's the difference between a book and a constitution? It's a letters on, on a paper, it should be read. <gasps> the Canadian Constitution. Right. There you have it. Make sure you read that. It'll change your life. Okay. Talk to you next time. <laughs>